look set to begin. That is leading the table in almost all sporting disciplines in and overall we ahead of everybody on the medal table. Here they are assured of at least a bronze in Ali El Salamoni, but can he surprise the Africa qualified heavyweight for the Olympic Games from Nigeria, like and Bolaro here in the semi-final one of men's heavyweight division. Both boxers sizing each other up, waiting to deliver that one killer punch notable with heavyweight boxers. Eight, on the offensive there, the Nigerian. Olympic time is here. Welcome here on the show, 360 Sports on Trust TV. I'm Adeni G. Shafe. We take you around the world of sports. As we know that uh, the Olympics actually started like a joke yesterday where men's football uh, took place across uh, different centers over there uh, in France where the teams are about to ready to see how they will do well, uh, at least uh, trying to fight for the honors of winning the Olympics. Now, we'll be running through some stories for you uh, concerning activities about the Olympics and also running through Nigerian sports team moment where we give you updates concerning what is happening concerning Nigerian football and also different sporting moments. Well, right now we'll be looking at uh, Olympic football that started yesterday. That has to do with the men. The first three will be Morocco Junior Atlas. Uh, Lions uh, beat Argentina in dramatic match. It was a match that actually engulfed in so many uh, issues there because uh, while they were playing, uh, well, <laughs> immediately against now equalized. They fired a lot of uh, uh, pitch. We had the uh, pitch invasion that came on the pitch there. And after that, the match, uh, everybody thought the match was over until they were called back to finish the remaining three minutes. And uh, afterwards, about an hour later, that goal that was called by just now was actually ruled out due, due to VAR review. And it was a very dramatic one because uh, coach of Argentina, Mascherano, couldn't believe his eyes for the fact that after they were able to score that goal, it was ruled out. A lot of issues here and there concerning that game. The pitch invasion also causing that delay uh, before a lot of people thought the, the match was over. But FIFA, uh, the NOC rather, <laughs> IOC, I beg your pardon, had to sanction that that match would go on and end the normal regulation time. It was a tough one, but that match saw the light of the day and it ended. For Morocco, it was a fight to finish. They really had to fight on because Argentina were really on their neck, breathing down to see how they can edge out the Atlas, uh, junior Atlas Lion of Morocco there. But it ended 2-1, uh, although it was 2-2 two, two earlier on before the VR review, where Morocco had, uh, they had an edge of 2-1 against Argentina. Quickly, let's look at the result of the main result uh, matches were played yesterday over there in Europe. Or rather in France, rather Guinea lost against New Zealand by goes to two. Why Egypt also played goalless against Dominican Republic? Another African team, Mali, played one all against Israel. Argentina won, Morocco two. France defeated USA by three goals to nil. Why Iraq? It was a good one for them. They defeated Ukraine by two one. Why Spain edged out Uzbekistan as Japan mauled Paraguay five nil uh, in that particular encounter there just to let you have a feel of uh, matches play at uh, the olympics yesterday concerning men right now join us talks for this hour from kaduna is uh, nazir jamal good to have you nazir yeah, thanks for having me good morning yes good to have you on 360 sport and now we talk about uh, the match between uh, morocco and argentina even though we've checked the result of all that teams but that match was the uh, <laughs> i would want to call it the star match but attention really was on it because of the dramatic way it ended and you heard when i was actually analyzing how it happened over there in france let's have your view concerning this 
Yeah, I think it was an entertaining encounter, unfortunately, for both sides. But, you know, the, the course of the game, I think everything was captured in the closing stages of the game because of what happened between the crowd and the Argentinian players. And then after that, the referee had to stop the game for the players to go back into the rest room. And then after like two hours, it did the, the players were brought back to the pitch again so that they can come back. And the decision was made that the goal is caught. You know, the second goal is called uh, is not a valid one. The goal does not count. So I think for me, it's understandable. It's understandable because that's part of the game. The issue that happened, I have seen so many people complain about the decision not made on time and the referee situation and stuff. But I think it was the right decision that was made because what happened was that it was clear that that goal that Argentina scored their equalizer wasn't a valid goal because there are so many question marks on it. And after that, the review was there. But unfortunately, for what happened in between the you know fans and the Argentinian players, that was what actually stopped them from making that decision on time to come back on the field and say that look, this is what exactly what this is exactly what happened. So for them to make that kind of decision, I think is a good one for. And for me, the height of it is that. They actually made the right call in cancelling Argentina's second goal and to make sure that they are being fair to Morocco. I think it's a good one. And for the game entirely as in this Argentinian team, you can see Nicolas Otamendi too being part of the team. I think it's a good one going forward for them. Let's see what is going to, you know, pans out. But I think right now it is a good call from the U um IOC, just like you said, to come back and make sure that the, the right decision was made, you know, for the goal that Argentina scored for it to be cancelled and for Morocco to have their fair share of what they exactly did in this game. Well, a tough one there. It was a very dramatic moment. Uh, for Argentina, well, they lost that game, and I know that uh, they will be rooting to see how they can do well in the remaining games. But for Morocco, Junior Atlas uh, Lions are really doing well right now. For the fact that they were able to hold their own, even scoring two goals, it was a plus for them. And now, if you look at uh, Moroccan football, it's really getting better to some extent. Uh, we saw what they did at the World Cup, and now look at what they are doing again at the Olympics. Even though it's just a uh, first match, but at least for being able to score those two goals against uh, Argentina, uh, with a team that we know that uh, if we look at this tournament right now, they've been tipped as the best so far in this tournament alongside Spain. But, uh, you know, it's, it's always uh, uh, very uh, <laughs> probable. Anything can still happen. But for Morocco, something good is happening concerning their football, right? Yeah, it is. It is happening. It is happening. You're right about it. I think they have actually improved football in that they are, you know, you know, side of their own side of football. I think they have improved so much and we have seen that improvement in the um, last World Cup. That is the 2022 World Cup. Unfortunately for us in the... Um, uh, the um, Africa Cup Nations, they couldn't do as well as we expected them to do. But right now, they are beginning to step up in the, you know, Olympics and doing well. The Junior Atlas are trying their best to make sure that they actually show the world what they can do. I think the improvement they have had has been very clear in the eye. Since when they performed in the World Cup, I think we have had how, yeah, we have had reports of how they used the money they gained from the FIFA grants and stuff, a whole lot of money that they gained, they have built pitches and they are making sure that they improve their grassroots football. And this Olympics, Olympics is entirely, is all about you know, um, the youth football. And I think we are beginning to see all of that with them. Although their team that played in the World Cup, the team that participated in the um, uh, Africa Cup Nations, most of them are players that they actually, you know, uh, took from Europe to make sure that they played for them. But right now we are beginning to see the okay, performance well, really, really uh, well. But, but with time, uh, with this kind of crop of players that we are beginning to see them bring in. Go on, go on, Ramadu, go on. Okay, with this kind of players that we are beginning to see them break in, I think it's going to be a good one for them in the future because we are beginning to see this kind of players, you know, uh, taking the game to Argentina, even beating Argentina. I think it's a good one. Let's see what they can do during the course of this tournament. And then we get to see with time who are, who are going to make it to Europe. And then we get to see maybe some of them will, will reach the level of um, Ashraf Hakimi, who played for Real Madrid now and playing for PSG, and Sophie and Amrabat, who was at uh, Fiorentina and alone at Manchester United. And then maybe some of them reached the heights of um, Sophia and Buffard, who played for Southampton a couple of years ago. Okay, well, while we're we talking about uh, Morocco, Argentina, let's just uh, touch on other African teams that participated at the Olympics uh, yesterday. We saw that Mali actually uh, they play goalless, uh, they play draw there. Guinea lost their game, and also you have uh, Egypt. Let's go back to that result as we talk about this. You saw Egypt playing uh, goalless, and uh, Mali won all. Why Guinea lost? Well, it was only Guinea that lost uh, yesterday. For Morocco, they won their game, and you look at uh, at least it's a good one for all African teams to start on this note. 
except for Guinea? Yeah, it is. It is. It is. I think it's a good one. It's a good one for them to start. Unfortunately and sadly for us, Nigeria is not part of the you know men's football. But I would have loved to see Nigeria too being part of this one. Egypt actually secured a good result for themselves and the Mali too whom actually drawn. I think it's a good way forward because it is the group stages, so you don't have to, you know, put in a whole lot of effort to make sure that you win all the games. Sometimes even a draw helps you in making sure that you progress into the next round of this tournament. The most important thing is making it run and starting with the draw, I think is a good one. If they can get a win, I think it will be a good one in the next game for themselves. If they can get four points, that will secure their place immediately into the next round of the Yama um, tournament. I think it's a good start for those Africa teams. A good start for African teams. Uh, talking about the Olympic Games where football was actually played yesterday. Well, they continue to battle themselves and to see how they will be able to make it. We're rooting for all the Africans, even though we don't have our own there. Uh, Nigerian team couldn't make it. But for Egypt, Mali, Guinea, and Morocco, well, Africans are rooting for you to go there and do the business of making sure you qualify from your group there. Well, just to give you the result of what happened yesterday in men's football. And for women's football, yes, we look at the big one happening today as to the Paris 2024 women's football. Super Falcons ready for Brazil's challenge in Badu. Well, that's where they'll be playing against Brazil today. It's a big match that will be coming up. In fact, we know that any time Nigeria we are meeting Brazil, Brazil always remember Atlanta 96. They will never forget that moment. And they are always looking for any opportunity to pay back against Nigeria. Our ladies are equal to the task. They want to make sure they make statement. And that match will be coming up tonight by 6 p.m. For our ladies, well, the battle line has been drawn and it has to actually end well in their favor tonight. Uh, Nazim Jamajo, a big match coming up today tonight between Super Falcons and Brazil. Yeah, a big one, a big one, actually, a big one. You know, whenever you talk about Brazil in the world of football, you know what the expectation is. And when you talk about the Super Falcons in, uh, you know, African football, you know what the expectation is. The nine-time, you know, Africa champions. You know, it, all of all of the, all of these things that I've mentioned tells you all you need to know about the weight that this game is carrying between both sides. I think it's going to be an entertaining game. But my hope is that the Super Falcons come out on top in this one because we have got a team that that is full of superstars, and I can see, you know, the feel-good factor that. Is in there with Asisa Oshola, the six time Africa player of the year, being part of the team and making sure that she delivered the experience, you know, across the you know camp so that everybody will know the expectation that is on their shoulders to make sure that they perform in this one. I think the Super Falcons are in a very good position. The only thing is that they are in a very tough group, and for them to you know, perform in this tournament and make sure that they go for that goal that everybody is calling them to go for. They have to do really well starting from tonight. If they get to be beat Brazil, that will take their confidence level to the next level. I think it will be a very massive achievement if they get to win this game. For them to, you know, go ahead, go ahead and beat for that goal that Aziza Oshola is talking about, or maybe a silver or bronze medal in this tournament. I think it's going to be fabulous, especially starting from tonight. A fabulous match coming up there between Nigeria and Brazil tonight by 6 p.m. Nigerian time. And at least uh, from the way it is, Falcons are fired up. They are really, really fired up concerning this game because they know that if they can't do well against Brazil, to send a signal to Spain and also to Japan in that Group C. And we just hope that they will do us proud there. A tough match there because we know what is at stake. Brazil also, they've been talking tough, trying to send some uh, fear down the spines of Super Falcons or Nigerian team. But we know that our ladies are battle ready. As Sister Toshuala said, well, from the way it is, they really believe that they can get a podium finish over there in France. Uh, looking at that statement, do you see that, uh, you see that coming up uh, for our ladies to so believe that, yes, they can make it to the podium with either bronze or silver or even gold? Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully we get one of them. Hopefully we get one of these, you know, medals that you mentioned. And I am going for the gold, to be honest, because we were in a very tough group in the, you know, Women's World Cup. We were in a very tough group back then, and I think we made it. I think even at that time, the defending Olympic champions are part of that group, talking of, uh, talking of um, 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 Canada, if I'm always taking. They were part of the group, but we still weasel our way out to qualify for the round of 16 of that game. I think we're in a very good position. The players are there. The talent is there. But uh, uh, the only my only problem with the team is that, you know, we struggle a little bit when we get to play in this kind of tournaments, the World Cup, the Olympics. You know, all of these things come a little bit of time. But unfortunately, um, hopefully, we get to carry that confidence from the, you know, the, the just the last World Cup that we were part of. We we'll carry that confidence and hope to come into this one so that the players can go ahead and perform. That's my only hope in the team. But 
to be honest with struggle a little bit. In if it was in Africa, I would have said it's a one-way traffic. We are going to win it. One way traffic, we're going to win it because we have almost always win whenever it comes to this Africa tournament. My hope is that this time around we carry that confidence, we carry that, you know, aura and everything to go into this tournament and play well. Sometimes it's not by finding yourself in a very difficult group or maybe a tough group, it's by winning it and having the confidence to play in the next round of games that are going to come your way. Well, for Super Falcon tonight is night. They just have to send a signal to others in that group if they are able to beat Brazil. That's a match that will be coming by 6 p.m. And at least uh, we'll be running live at 5.30 for you to at least contribute to predict who's going to be the winner by that time. We're opening phone line by 5.30. Join us for that time. And right now, we'll quickly run through another story still about the Olympics. And we have Team Nigeria. 88 of them are battle ready. Team Nigeria in high spirits ahead of Paris 2024 Olympic Games. We know that football will be starting today. And also all the other athletes building badminton, athletics, uh, judo, rather, uh, that discourse, talking about uh, short pulls. They are all ready to see how they will do well for Nigeria. At least a podium finish is what they are looking at. And we believe that these Nigerians will be competing in about 12 different sporting moments. Will do us proud in boxing, uh, wrestling, and don't forget weightlifting is there. Well, for Team Nigeria, they are in high spirit ahead of the Olympics. And that's a good one because right as we speak, uh, really, they are in high spirit. Jamal Ajo. Yeah, of course, they have to be in high spirits. You know, sometimes even participating in the tournament only takes your confidence level, you know, to where you don't expect. And then the players will be boosted, the players will be excited, all the athletes will be excited. And you see that they perform and they exceed the level of expectations of Nigeria. I think that's my hope on these players of the team because we are fully prepared. We've got athletes that are ready, 88 of them, just like you said. I think... All of them will be ready, should be ready, and should be excited to be part of this, you know, at the Olympics that is going to come right now. And I think I have saw speculations that the minister confirmed that they have already paid allowances to these players, player, players, which I think is going to be a good motivation going forward because they showed them that, look, it is business time. Let them just focus and do what they are, you know, expected to do in France. Team Nigeria and try to see how they can off stage uh, 1996 Atlanta Olympics record and they want to see how they can win more gold uh, for Nigeria there. Wishing them the best as they prosecute their games in different sports in the moment they find themselves. For Team Nigeria, as we say from here, up Niger, they never give us spirits, uh, never die in spirits in Nigeria and so over there will do us proud by the time the main event starts. And now talking about the Olympics now, we still have our own table tennis players, talking about Aruna Quadri, or like you did or Motayo Edem Offion. Let's look at our story. Olympic table tennis, or Motayo Aruna get tricky draws. Edem Belo gets tough force. They will be facing uh, some players in their first round games. They will be playing the preliminary round, but they will be starting from the first round. And now let's look at it for men. Uh, looking at the fixtures there, Aruna Quadri will be playing against Edward in no school of Romania, while Olagide or Motai of Nigeria will be facing Noshad Alamea of Iran. Those are the, uh, the first games that they will be facing, Motai and Aruna facing the Romania and also the Iranian there in the main singles first round involving Nigeria at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games table tennis sport. And now for women, let's look at their own first round involving Nigerians, Ofiong Edem of Nigeria versus Bruna. Takahashi of Brazil, while Fatima Belo debutant. These are first time at the Olympics. She'll be facing Gianna Yuan of France. Well, actually, is a Chinese born right now playing for France. And both of them will be facing Ofiong Edem and Fatima Belo in the women's singles first round involving Nigerians at the Olympic Games for table tennis. Well, uh, from the way it is, our, our uh, table tennis players, this is Fatima Belo, debutant at the Olympics. She's ready to make her mark at the Olympics against our opponent, and not forgetting your large deal, Motai or FM uh, of Young Edem, who also has been there, and Aruna Quadri, four of them represent Nigeria in table tennis. And right now, they are also battling, although it's very tricky, because according to the record on ground, uh, Aruna Quadri have made Romania once, although it ended in favor of the Romanian, and it's a tough one. But right now, we know that anything can happen in this competition. And for Aruna Quadri, or like or Motai or Edem, and Fatima Belo, they are battle ready for this competition. We are hoping that they will do us proud there at the competition of uh, table tennis as they start their games. Well, uh, at least uh, we are hoping, really hoping, that they will do us proud because uh, they've been really training ahead of the Olympics.
Now, Aruna Jamajo, if you look at table tennis, we know that we have, in fact, the best in Africa coming from Nigeria, Aruna Kodri. They are leading out the pack for Nigeria. And we have Olagidi Amota, we have Fatima Belo, and we have Ophiong Edem, two ladies, and also two men representing us. And these are the fixtures you just roll out there for their first round games uh, that they will play at the Olympics. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think we just hope they do well. We just hope they do well. That is because when I see the weight of the countries that are playing yeah. against, although it's not football, the, the I can see France, I can see them playing the against um, Iran as well as Japan. And whenever it comes to this kind of athletics, athletics tops, I think they try their best to make sure that they give countries problems. So I have my high hopes on Aruna Kodri because when it comes to, you know, um, table, table, table tennis in Africa, we can okay, in the world so to some uh, extent. This, uh, we get to hear the name of Aruna Quadri all over the place because of how well. Table tennis, Aruna Quadri of Young Edem. Fatima Bello is a debutant in this competition. And also Olajide or Motayo, who was there four years ago. And now uh, he wants to make sure he made a mark for Nigeria in this competition. Uh, um, Jamal Joe, you were making a point before that particular technical hitch. Uh, it's good to have you back. Continue. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a good one because whenever you talk about um, African table tennis to some extent in the world, sir, you can hear people talk about Aruna Kodri, whom has performed and make him a name for himself when it comes to, you know, table tennis. I think our high hopes will be on him. And then we have to pray for him to make sure that he does well in this tournament because I think it's been a while that he actually did well in the Olympics. So I just hope that he goes out and beat that Romanian because we really need to start from the beginning so that we can gain more medals and more and more as the games continue. And then you look at uh, Fatima Bello, who is participating for the first time too. I think it's a good one to have this kind of participants coming for the first time. The excitement is there with her. I think she's young and she looks ready and she looks back to ready. I think hopefully she does well too in this tournament playing against the, you know, France international as well as uh, if Yonku is playing against against um, a, a, a Brazilian, I think it's going to be a little difficult, just like you said, a little bit difficult and a little bit tough. But at the end of the day, the desire and the spirit that is with these players and the confidence, the commitment, all of it should be with them so that they can perform really well and make sure that Nigeria, you know, flag of Nigeria has been, you know, flied very high at the end of the day when it comes to, you know, table tennis in the, in the Olympics. Right? I just hope that our players do well when it comes to this um, uh, table tennis. But our high hopes will definitely be on Aruna Kwadri, whom have made him the name for himself, just like I said, in the bar, in the table tennis industry very, very well. Everybody knows him in the world to some extent. And so many people know Aruna Kwadri when it comes to, you know, table tennis. We just hope he does well. We just hope that Aruna Kwadri will do well alongside others. Yes, so we have four of them, two men and also two ladies, where one of them is actually a debutant. That's the Fatima Bello. And they right now are ready to see how they will do well in the sport of ping pong, as they call it. And really, we've been showcasing Nigerians that will be participating at the Olympics. And to let you have a feel of what is happening there, we continue to bring you more updates concerning Team Nigeria, how they are really fearing at their camp and also the competition they are competing. But for today, it's going to be Super Falcons Day because they'll be facing Brazil in the first match of their Group C. And the good thing is that they are taking a cue from Atlanta 1996 uh, team because they really need to uh, speak with those players. That would be a good one if the likes of Kanu Wanko and the rest can actually make a call through and see how they can inspire these ladies that they can do it against Brazil. Forget about the name. Go out there and do the business of playing against them. You can beat them. After all, we saw what happened at the World Cup where <laughs> a particular team was shocked. Now, she's talking about uh, sport, but this time around we'll come back to Africa. Let's talk about CAF Women's Champions League. What will be qualifiers that will be coming up? We have a team from Nigeria, Edo Queens, that will be representing us there. Edo Queens, Taku Asaka's Ladies of Ghana, two others in Group B. They will be playing uh, for the qualifiers to see how they will do well. It has been a while. Uh, our team are not really getting it right. But right now we have Asaka's Ladies of Ghana in Group B. Omini Sports and Tinsel. We have AS Gary of uh, National and also Edo Queens of Nigeria. Why in Group A is Inter the Abidjan, uh, and non uh, VFC and ASS Koza uh, that will be playing the West African side uh, to see who will have not to play at the CAF Champions League. But for this one, Edo Queen need to really tighten up their belt. It's a tough one, especially against Asakas of uh, uh, Ghana. We know that anytime we are meeting in any competition, especially football, Ghanaians and Nigerians, it's a different ball game entirely. So it's always a very tough one. Jamajo, you look at this uh, uh, group 
Group B, in fact, the biggest opponent there is going to be Asaka's Ladies of uh, Ghana. And we know that it's, it's going to be a tough match between the two. Yeah, it has always been. It has always been when it comes to Ghana against Nigeria. Just like you said, the Jalof Derby. So many things involved uh, in this kind of thing. Uh, I just hope the Nigerians will step up. Edo Queens have got a lot of, you know, good players in their team. I think during the time I have followed them a little bit, I think I'm impressed with what I have seen from them. But unfortunately, I just know a little bit of, um, you know, the team that they are going to play against. But, you know, whenever you know your team, you know you have trust on them. And you know that they can go ahead and do the business that they have for them. Although we struggle a little bit it comes to playing this kind of continental tournament, whether men or women. I know that, um, you know, Bielsa Queens at some point were doing very, very well and then they came to disappear a little bit. And then you talk about the Edo Queens that are beginning to come in right now. I just hope they turn out and do what is expected from them because the Derby, you know, sometimes when the Derby comes around, form flies out the window. So I just hope when the form flies the window, the class remains with them because the class has always been permanent. If it stays with them and the little bit of experience they have from playing football in this country help them, they will go ahead and do the required business that we expect them to do because they have really fought hard to be in this place. You know, qualifying to this kind of tournament in, in, in Nigeria is very, very difficult. We just hope the Edo Queens turn out and beat their opponents in this one. You know, although it's a very difficult one, but our hope is always going to be with them. Uh, even though it's going to be difficult, we know that uh, to some extent, when it comes to football in Africa right now, to some, uh, when it comes to women football, rather, uh, the gap between Nigeria leading the pack before is closing and closing. A lot of uh, uh, teams are really closing the gap against us. Be it South Africa, be it Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea, mention them. They are really getting closer and closer. And in club football, we've seen that uh, it has been difficult for Nigerian teams to be able to dominate Africa the way Super Falcons did. And now, what do you think uh, we can do better to make our women football, especially league football now, something like this that has to do with... Uh, Edo Queen representing Nigeria, the West African, that's what would be qualifier in the CAF Women's Champions League. What can they do to be able to do well and make it to the main event, that is CAF Champions League proper, where they can also dominate? And we've seen the team from North Africa and also South Africa, Southern Africa really dominating uh, club, women's club football. Yeah, I think the only way forward is for us to put more focus on our league, talking of the women's league. I think if we get to put more focus on the league, if we get to make it more exciting, if we get to, you know, get people that are coming and help improve the league, it will be better. That will be the start of it. If we get to improve that, then those clubs should, fo should can go ahead and focus on their, you know, academy so that they can be able to have that transition between the academy and the first team players. If they can get that, I think it's a way forward. And then if we get to improve that league, then that will help us in make sure that making sure that we perform in the continental tournaments too. Because it's really sad to see that the Super Falcons are winning almost every time they get to play in Africa, and we don't have a very good league when it comes to the women's football. Talking of that, and the BFL, we have to focus a little bit more of it. Just like we used to focus more on the um, NPFL, focus more a little bit of this league, make it better, and make sure that these teams do really well, and then get people that will come in and invest their money. I think that would be a good way forward. The improvement is needed. We need to take everything to the next level, and then at the end of the day, we'll get to have what we really want to have. If we improve that, those teams get to improve. Maybe we might have our aim by in the women's football when it comes to the continental football that almost every time that we need somebody that will go out and perform, they'll go out and perform in the continental football and at the end of the day, we won't be let down. Well, seriously, something must be done concerning our football there because league football in Nigeria, when it comes to Africa, it's been a very long time that we've been able to dominate and now we're finding it very difficult. In fact, each time the draw is actually made, you look at CAF Champions League, CAF Confederation, before you know it, first round, second round, Nigerian teams are out and something must be done to get it right. But although we've seen that... Uh, a Nigerian uh, Premier Football League now, with the organization and everything that is happening, it seems to be getting better. Hopefully, that will be transferred to their performance at the CAF Interclub competition. And we want to see something good happening concerning our football. We've been talking with uh, Naziru Jamajo on the show, 360 Sport, where we'll be running through stories for you and to also let you have a feel of what is happening around the world of sport. Focusing on Nigeria most times because on this station, we always document Nigerian stories. Now, uh, we move away from talking about uh, club football in Africa and also that has to do with women, Edoku representing us there. And hopefully they will do us proud by the time they face 
the likes of Asakas of Ghana, who will right now be trying to see and turn into Jollof uh, <laughs> Derby. Now, let's talk about the NNL. A team called Sokoto United, as we speak right now, they have gotten new board that was actually constituted uh, some days ago. Let's look at uh, the board uh, being instituted by the uh, state government. We have Umar Mohamed Mariah as the general manager, Abubakar Sadiq Sheh as the team manager, Abdul Hakim Yakubu, secretary, Al Yassar Ali as welfare, while the media officer is Abdul Salama Ibrahim Imam. Uh, these are the people that have been appointed to run the affairs of Sokoto United. We know that uh, that team, uh, they represent Sokoto State, and they want to do well in the NNL this time around. That's why they actually instituted that particular, or uh, constituted that uh, board for them to see how they will do well. Well, uh, Jamajo, you look at Sokoto United trying to do things right. They quickly set up, they disbanded, they dissolved the former one, and now they have a new one for them to run smooth the football affairs there in the state of Sokoto there. Yeah, I think it's a good one for them. It's a good one for them because going forward into the next season, maybe they feel like they need new people that can come in and handle the team. I just hope all of these people are coming to the team are footballing people because sometimes it's not about the politics. It's not about bringing somebody that you know into a football club. It's about finding the right person to handle the job because football is not something that you can wake up from sleep without having knowledge of it and you think you can go ahead and do it if those people if most of the people that are coming in just like you mentioned all of them are part of the footballing people i think it's a good way forward for Sokoto united because playing in the end of in, in the nnl is a little bit difficult you have to consult everything in time so that whenever the league gets starts i think the team will get to perform i think last season Sokoto united were a bit close to qualifying to the npfl and playing in the you know no, uh, the, the the super eight that we used to play at the end of the season they were a bit close so maybe the changes are needed so that next season they can make it. They feel like maybe the board let them down because of lack of proper preparations or anything similar to that. If they can get these people that are coming in, the right people, uh, if the, these people that are coming in are the right people to take them, then we'll get to see. But hopefully they are the ones because sometimes it's not about bringing the new people, it's about bringing people who know where, you know, what is expected from them to do. If those that were sacked, are people that know football actually and can improve from what they did last season, I think... It wouldn't be a good decision for them to change the board, but let's give them, you know, let, let's cut them some slack and see what this new board that are coming in would do with this team. Well, seriously, we've been talking concerning Sokoto United there for the fact that uh, they set up a management board and these are the uh, men that will be running the affairs there. Hopefully, they will do well uh, in the coming season. Still talking about football, but this time around, we know that a season of a uh, lot of uh, states trying to change the affairs of their football management. We know that Nasarawa United board also has been disbanded last week. And uh, right, right now, uh, the news came out uh, rather this week that uh, uh, from the way it says, they will be setting up a new board. The, the board has been uh, at least uh, dissolved there. And now let's talk about on those state. Those state also they be able to appoint their on those state football agency board. Let's look at that story. On those football agency board promises aggressive football development. They want to make sure things are different this time around. After the new management board has been set up for on those football agency board, and they want to at least aggressively go into the grassroots, get the right people, right player, uh, right technical department for them to see how they can transform on those state football, both women and men football and also see how they can add value to make sure that state is among those states that will be making uh, uh, at least that particular record when it comes to football development. Now, let's look at the board of the uh, of those states. Uh, that's the one they call OSFA. They are Bamindele Ologunloa, executive chairman of the central uh, of that state. Oladi Major Bimbola, full-time member from the south. Akin today, Akin Shemola, full-time member from the north. Tokumbo Akie Lure, part-time member, football association representative. And you have Evelyn Levy, the lady uh, there, part-time member, Ministry of Sports representative, making the court among the board members of the Undo State Football Agency, who are right now saying they want to make sure they make aggressive development concerning football in Undo State by making sure they go into the grassroots and also organizing different competitions under 18, under 13, to see how they can discover a lot of talent for Undo State. That's a good one coming from that state, Jamajo. 
Yeah, I think yeah, I think it's a good one because the most important thing right now is just to focus on you know grassroots improvement. If you don't focus on that, with those grassroots improvement at the end of the day, you wouldn't be having the players that you want to have, especially in the you know younger teams that are coming up in the state. I think it's a good one from Ondo State Government to focus more on the grassroots. Sometimes Kuma is not by talk, coming out to talk about you know having all of these things and want to improve it. Sometimes it's by putting the work you know behind the scene. Put in the work so that at the end of the day we we'll have so many players from Ondo coming into the NPFL, so many players playing in the NBA, NLL, and all of those leagues that you know those small teams get to participate in. If they don't get to that, then all of these things are not really required because all the promises of aggressive football development and everything that you can see sometimes it doesn't really live up to the expectations. But I hope they get to do that because with that we get to see more players coming out from Ondo and playing in the NBA. We don't know how far these TD you know, players that are coming out can go, to honest. Okay, well, seriously, it's getting better across Nigeria. It seems all these states are trying to see how they can get the right hands on the hill to see what they will be doing there. Well, uh, getting those, uh, the board set up there concerning on those states, uh, football agency, Sokoto United board, Nasarawa United, very soon they will be appointed their own management board. And now we talk about low B stars, the team they call the shoe, <laughs> shoe get size. That's their slogan. They will be playing in Bauchi State. Well, right now they've adopted uh, Abubakar Tafawa Balewa Stadium as home ground for 2024 2025 MPFL uh, season where they'll be playing. They came six last season and now they want to see how they will do well before their own uh, stadium, Apa Aku Stadium, will be ready for action. But before then, they will be playing away at the at that, uh, that's uh, Tafawa Balewa Stadium in Bauchi. A big one there for Lobby Stars. Uh, well, home away from what is going to be for them. I'm talking about Lobby Stars now, Jamajo. Yeah, yeah, I think a long way away from home for them talking about, you know, Lobby Stars. I think it's really sad sometimes that these teams you know, don't have stadiums that they can host their own games by themselves. It's a little bit sad, but hopefully for them, I hope that they find Bochi as one of their, you know, comfortable places that they can go to and play football. Because sometimes playing away from home, my word, is, is really different from playing at home. No matter how you take it, no matter how you consider it, you know, the fans, sometimes they will struggle to travel to, you know, go ahead and support you when you needed it to be, when you need them to be behind your back, when you need them to be the, your 12th man of the pitch. It's going to be difficult, but I just pray, I just pray the fans in Bauchi give them that solidarity and some of the fans will almost always find their way to go ahead and, you know, support their team when they play. But playing at home, there is no place like home, to be honest. Okay, that uh, reminds me to at least uh, pull your leg a bit concerning your team, Wiki Torres of Bauchi. <laughs> so now that Lobby will be playing there, so what happens to Wiki? We are still in the NLN now, no problem. We'll still manage them, we'll accommodate them, let them know worry. We will not be playing on the same day at home, so we can we'll accommodate them, no problem. That wouldn't be a problem. It's good to have, you know, friends in football. It's good to have people that can come in and then you get to relate with them. It's not by fighting, they are not our enemies. So we'll host them, we'll give them every single thing that they want, hopefully, so that they can perform in the NPFL. Okay, uh, at least you are talking like the chairman of that club. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> let's see how it goes uh, for Lobby Stars and uh, Wiki Torres. I'm sure the same stadium, or do different league now. And then and also the MPFL. They're the best team continue to win there. That's uh, Bauchi Stadium, uh, where Lobby Stars will be playing their trip for next season before they will move back to Upper Aku Stadium in Makodi. But for now, Bauchi is the home uh, for uh, Lobby Stars of Makodi. Sugar size, as they call them. Well, all Nigerian teams are really uh, trying to engage themselves ahead of the league, uh, league season that will be coming up. August 31st is the D-Day for the league to actually kick start. And we have all the teams battle ready. And 200 million naira is at stake for the 20 teams to fight for at the end of the season. It's getting better. And we also heard that it's possible that our league will get a sponsor from abroad if everything goes well right now. I'm still talking about Nigerian football, but this time around, let's go to the central state of Niger, Niger state government. 
they deem it fit to at least uh, uh, give uh, the team Niger Tornado's uh, 35 seater boss uh, from that state government. The Niger Tornado's received a new 35 seater boss. This will at least ease their pain of traveling around the country. We're still hoping that uh, uh, we begin to see all our teams flying around. It's not easy traveling from far distance to play football, and they always want to get results. Well, this is the story we're looking at, Nazir. And uh, for Niger Tornadoes, they have received a new 35-seater uh, bus to ease their pains of that uh, Johnny jet lag they usually get from the former bus they used to have. But right now, this one at least moves smoothly and get them to their destination. Yeah, I think I think it's a good way to go ahead and start preparing ahead of the new season. My hope is that this boss will take them as far as they want to go because it seems like the boss looks good in the eye. Yeah, it looks good in the eye. I hope that it has quality that it can lead them to wherever they want to go. And it seems like this can accommodate a lot of their players because it is a big boss that can you know carry their players all around the place. I think it's a good one for them. It's a good one from the state, but it's not by only buying the boss. You know, they have to go ahead and put in the work to get the players ready, prepare them pay their salaries, get their contracts ready on time. You know, all of these things need to be in place. Yeah, buying the boss, I think, is a good way forward for them, but they need to add a little bit more of work so that at the end of the day, when the league gets to start, hopefully, this year will not have any postponement when it comes to the league. When the league gets to start at, by the 31st of August, that is in more than a month. We are talking about, like, um, close to 40 days right now. When the leagues get to start, they will be ready so that they can go ahead and perform. You know, sometimes this preparation takes the team to the next level, especially when it comes to gathering points at the start of the season. When you gather points early, before all teams get to start doing their business, you have gone a little bit far. I think it will be a good one for you going forward. Well, at least, uh, just like you said, hopefully the, t the boss will take them far. <laughs> Uh, but someone was asking a question that why is always our boss different? Why don't we use those uh, bosses that those clubs in Europe? Uh, why are always always looking like a, a coaster? Anyway, uh, Jamajo, <laughs> like, like uh, almost all the teams, because we've seen bosses like this that really, with all due respect to Niger State government, appreciate what they've done, but just taking a cue from this, that uh, uh, other clubs like that, we've seen most of the time that you see bosses like this breaking down and the players out to, uh, in fact, they go through a lot of pains. Uh, like I said earlier, that it's high time that all these teams begin to travel by air to reduce the stress. If they really wanted to perform well, maybe at least they travel to the nearest town or city, they can easily take uh, uh, a bus to the place that is closer there, at least to some extent, right? Yeah, no doubt. Well, I think traveling by air is the best. If we have, if we have had train in this country, I think it will help so much too in making the travels very easy for the players because the players need to be relaxed whenever they are traveling. But the issue is, can these clubs or can these governments afford to fly all of these players by air? whenever they are playing away from home. We are talking about 18 round of games away from home every single season. That is only in the NPF. not talking about the Confederations Cup or anything that is going to come the way of any team. So can they afford to fly all of these players 18 times? I don't think so, but if they get to sit down and, you know, categorize all of these things, let's say we are playing 18 times away from home in a single season, and during the course of that 18 time, maybe traveling from Bauchi to for example, traveling from Pouch to Joss is not that far. So they can take their boss and just travel, you know, maybe even on the day of the game, they can travel, go there and play their game and come back to Bauchi because it's not far. But when it comes to a team from Bauchi playing against, you know, one of, um, if you're talking about uh, player teams in Kogi or maybe you talk about teams in Benue or somewhere like that, teams that are far away from the state that you guys get to play, then they can take the flight. It's too expensive, we know, but to give the players that comfort, we are talking about 200 million naira at the end of the day as the prize money for any team that gets to win the league. It's a huge amount of money. It's a huge amount of money. You can say, okay, if we are confident that we are going to win the league, then we can sacrifice a little bit of that money into the transportation of those players so that at the end of the day, if we get to win the league, it will be more than enough for us to have that money and then do something, no matter how little, even if it is a million naira that you have, out of the money that you spend, that is, it comes on top of that money. I think it's a good one. So the teams need to sit down and categorize, maybe say, if we are going away, we take the bus. If we are not going far, if we are going far away from home, we take our plane and then we go ahead and go and come back. I think that should be the way. But the players, just like, just like you said, do go through a whole lot of stress. And it's not only by that stress, they go a whole lot of stress when it comes to playing and the traveling and everything that's involved. And you need to keep your players fresh if you want them to perform. Well, 
We're talking about uh, MP MPFL clubs uh, there. Uh, things will just get better. Well, before we wrap it up, Jamal Joe, Nigerian Brazil tonight by 6 p.m. Your prediction before we go. We'll beat them to one. We'll beat them to we'll one. Them to one. Well, Octopus, Jamal Joe has spoken. Hopefully, it will <laughs> be like that. Thank you so much for joining us uh, from Kaduna, Jamal Joe. Yeah. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Okay, so before we wrap it up, just to give you some transfer gossips there quickly, starting from the home scene, MPFA transfer. If you are your name in Ari joins Raymond starts from Abia Warriors, he's back to where he used to be and he wants to showcase his defensive uh, uh, talents there. Another one says MPFA transfer, Ibrahim Mustafa Yuga rejoins El Kanemi Warriors from Kano Pillars. He's also back home to roots there concerning Ibrahim Yuga. Another one that has to do with Ali Tihad of Saudi Arabia signs French winger Moussa Diaby from Axon Villa in a 15 million euro five year deal. He will be any 20 million euro in a year. Good one for him. He's actually making a good move for in his career, why Atletico Madrid confident of signing Chelsea midfielder Conor Gallagher? Uh, they were trying to see how they can get Gallagher there. Uh, Conor Gallagher, a Chelsea player that Atletico Madrid are really, really edging closer to get his signature to move uh, to the stadium they call Wanda Metropolitano. And the last one to be with Chelsea, the Blues, right now, closing in on Villarreal goalkeeper Philip Jorgensen. They want to get him to uh, that, that particular bridge called Stanford. To see how he can add more spark to the goalkeeping department uh, concerning the Blues. Yeah, Chelsea really trying to see how they can get against in there to sign for them. Philip is his name. And let's see maybe we're flipping them with a lot of opportunities uh, by working hard for Chelsea next season. That's it on the show. 360 Sport on Trust TV. We'll always tell you that sport is business and fitness. For Nigeria versus Brazil tonight. Super Falcons, wish them the best. And hopefully they will win just like Damajo said. I'm Adeni Aji Shafir. Thanks for watching.